Okay, so for this video, what we're going to do is take a rare look inside an air conditioning and refrigeration system. Every air conditioning system, whether it's on a residential home or a large commercial building, has a complete refrigeration cycle built into it. Now typically we can never see what the refrigerant is doing because it's all copper tubing and you can't see through it. Well with the aid of this machine today we're going to look inside the machine and see exactly what occurs in the evaporator coil, exactly what occurs in the condensing coil to help you better understand the thermodynamics that go into the refrigeration cycle. The first portion of the system we'll talk about is the evaporator and what takes place in the evaporation process. Liquid refrigerant is fed to a metering device. The metering device, which sits outside of the evaporator coil, dramatically drops the pressure and the saturation temperature of the refrigerant, which leads to some of it immediately boiling off due to the rapid temperature change. This rapid boiling of refrigerant is called flash gas. And in an average refrigeration system used in air conditioning, about 20% of the refrigerant boils immediately to flash gas. As you look at our first tube here, you can see that about 20% of the refrigerant has transferred to vapor already. Now the liquid refrigerant is going to continue to travel through our evaporator coil where the refrigerant is absorbing heat from the conditioned space. As it does, the heat that enters the refrigerant changes the state of the refrigerant. It continues to boil the refrigerant or evaporate it in the evaporator coil. You can see in the center here, there's less liquid and there's more vapor. As we go up to the top and we start off more liquid here, you can actually see a dramatic decrease in the amount of liquid at the last, end, or the last point of the tubing. And then finally, we move back to the very back. Very small amounts of refrigerant vapor, or sorry, refrigerant liquid, and large amounts of vapor. The next tube, we can see it happening even more. And then finally, on the last tube, you can see that we've completely evaporated the refrigerant. Now we're not done. Now that we've completely changed its state to a vapor, there's something else we need to do. And that's superheating the refrigerant, which is nothing more than heating the refrigerant above its boiling point. For this refrigerant, if it was R22, or R410A that you would find in a residential air conditioning system, it would boil at about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So we would add 10 to 15 degrees of superheat to heat the refrigerant above its boiling point. This serves one purpose. Its only function is to make sure no liquid refrigerant enters the compressor where it could damage or destroy the compressor. In our next clip, we'll show you what takes place in the condensing coil and how the condensing process occurs. Now that the refrigerants traveled through the evaporator and it's become 100% superheated gas, it goes to the compressor. And as its name applies, or as its name suggests, the compressor compresses the refrigerant. By compressing it, it does two things. It raises its pressure and it also raises its saturation temperature. And again, saturation temperature is the point at where the refrigerant will either condense or evaporate, the point where it's ready to change state. What we're seeing here is the discharge line leaving the compressor. And as we look at the tube, we can tell that there's no liquid refrigerant present. The only thing traveling through the discharge line is small droplets of refrigerant oil that leave through the compressor. They go through the discharge line and now they enter into our condenser at this first row. And as you can see, when the refrigerant first enters, it's almost invisible. That's because entering the condenser, we have 100% superheated refrigerant vapor. It's 100% gas. The first thing the condenser does is now that the compressor has raised the temperature of the refrigerant above the temperature of the room air that's passing over it, it starts to throw the heat away from the refrigerant to the air passing over it. And what we can see in this first row is that some refrigerant vapor is starting to form. And as that refrigerant vapor is starting to form, we are at the saturation point, or we're dropping to the saturation point, doing the first thing that takes place in a condenser coil, the de-superheating of the refrigerant. 
or bringing it back down to its boiling or condensing point. Now, as the refrigerant travels through additional places in the condensing coil, you can see that it's starting to change state. And what we're starting to see is larger amounts of liquid condensing and less vapor present. As we travel through other tubes, we're going to continue this condensing or saturating process or saturation process where we're rejecting heat and condensing the refrigerant back to a liquid. We're going to continue to move through and you can see the ratio change more and more. Finally, we're going to get down to the last tube in the condenser coil. At this point, the refrigerant is now 100% liquid, but we're not done with it. We're going to continue to remove heat. And just like we did in the evaporator coil, we're going to continually change the temperature of the refrigerant. Now that it's 100% liquid refrigerant, we're going to continue to drop its temperature. And dropping the temperature of that refrigerant is called sub-cooling, or dropping it below its condensing point. It's really not an effective method of heat transfer. The most effective way to transfer heat is by changing the state of the refrigerant. However, by subcooling it, we are guaranteeing that the liquid refrigerant that travels back to the metering device to start this process all over again is 100% liquid refrigerant below its condensing point. Now, the metering device will quickly drop the pressure and the saturation temperature, feed refrigerant back to the evaporator, and the process will continue over and over again. We cycle the same refrigerant throughout the system all day long. The refrigerant doesn't get old, it doesn't get tired, it doesn't wear out, or lose its thermodynamic properties. It just continually changes state from a liquid to a vapor in the evaporator, then from a vapor to a higher temperature vapor in the compressor, and then from a vapor to a liquid in the condensing coil. And it repeats the process over and over again. The greatest amount of work being done is all the work necessary to change the state of the refrigerant. That's why you'll notice that approximately two-thirds of the coil is used to change the state. And only a small portion of the beginning of the coil and the end of the coils actually change their temperatures. This has been a slight look inside, or a small look inside, an air conditioning refrigeration system. Now you can visually see what's happening in the evaporator, the compressor, and the condenser as you further your studies.